welcome to Is It Wrong to Kiss the Bracken? This is a shoujo anime themed dating sim in which you are a scrap collector on a distant moon longing for a better life. Luckily, fate is about to change that. Let's get started. We made this in 12 days because I had like the sudden Delulu to be like, oh, you know what? We should just make a dating sim where we can uh, date the Bracken. And my friends are just like, hell yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, there's custom pronouns. My cat is wigging out in the back. And if you type in anything other than the bracken, it glitches to the bracken, which is pretty cool. Planning on experimentation. Here's our shoujo anime opening. I'd still like the boob grab as well. I'm so keen. I hope you guys like it. I was hoping for a fresh start, but I'm just in debt. I sigh as I jump off the side of the rickety ship, boots kicking up a flurry of dust. Another day, two undergrad degrees, one postgraduate, and a whole year of rejection emails. This is the best I can get. A run-down job doing god knows what in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. In a desperate attempt to pay off my student debt, I collect scrap, drop it off, and receive payment. Rinse and repeat. Sighing, I unlock my phone to check on my main group chat. It's my only solace keeping me going in this monotony, which is kind of sad, now that I think about it. Affectionately named the Hot Monster Simp Chat, they've asked me to keep them updated during my assignment on this new moon. I scroll through the chat and peruse the usual flood of way too sexy monster pics before typing out a response. Heyo, landed safely. Immediately, I get a ping back from Ori. Of course she would be the one to reply the quickest. If you see any hot monsters, kiss them. I laugh and type out a response. This isn't fantasy stuff, like Mahaya's horror from Elder Papyrus. I don't wanna die. Can I can I just flex at the references I put in the script, please? Another friend responds with a fake crying gif. Chuckling to myself, I lock my phone and stash it in my pocket, turning to my teammate. What's the status? Larry turns and brandishes his clipboard. It's the boy! We haven't worked together before, but people back at HQ say he's easy to get along with, which rings true so far. Plus, he's a great navigator, and he has experience with the freakish weather patterns common on alien moons. Everything looks good, weather shouldn't be too bad for the duration we're here. Although, by my calculations, there is an 88% chance of a storm happening tomorrow morning. Oh, sh should we set the shields up? Nah, let's do it later. We can grab some scrap inside and then set it up when the sun isn't so harsh. Nodding, I strap on the essentials, a flashlight and a walkie-talkie. When they're secure across my shoulder, I grab a shovel. Thanks, Larry. Luckily, we shouldn't be here too long. The quota isn't too much this time. Larry nods and gathers up his flashlight and shovel before jumping off the side of the ship, kicking up dust as he lands. I follow, looking up at the looming building ahead. Experimentation. An abandoned moon that once held life. Not very dangerous compared to the likes of the other moons like Dine or Titan. I turn to Larry. We should be careful. Always am. I huff as I stagger back towards the door, holding a large crate of bottles and a bolt. My shovel balanced precariously on top. I haul my cargo over to the ledge, dumping it onto the dusty ground below, before descending and talking into my walkie-talkie. Larry? I'm carrying stuff back to the ship. I'll hop on the terminal for a bit later. Okie dokie, pineapple pokey. He's so cute. But yeah, that's an actual quote from one of my friends too. Back on the ship, I organize the current loot we have and do a quick scan. 80 credits. Not bad for the first haul of the day. While I'm there, I jump on the terminal bring up the monitor to check Larry's location. Nothing around you at the moment, Larry. I keep an eye on his little dot walking around in the dark, then I see it. Larry, be careful, something's venting in the adjacent hallway. Shit, my flashlight's about to die. I can guide you, just be quick, okay? Okay, okay. You can get me out, right? Yes, I can do this. I watch the red blip on the map, slowly, advance towards Larry. Approaching your six, hurry! I watch on the monitor as Larry turns around, and whatever is coming up behind him, freezes in place. Larry? You okay? Fuck, I, I think I'm done for. What is it? My voice shakes. New creature data, sent to terminal. It, it isn't moving. I've scanned it. My fingers fly across the keyboard, bringing up the file. Sigur danger level, 80%. Scientific name, The Caligaris. I quickly skim the file. The Caligaris, or colloquially named Coilheads, have not been studied extensively due to their extreme unpredictability. Just stare at them, or use a stun grenade. I, I think if you keep your eyes on it, it won't move? What, like some weeping angel bullshit? Yeah, hey, it'll be okay. I can see you on the monitor, remember? I'll guide you out. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay, let's do this. I'm sorry for yelling. No, that's okay, you're all good. Go straight backwards. 
Keep your hand on the wall and take the first right. I need to get Larry out of there. Larry staggers backwards, slowly rounding the corner. The coil head springs forward at breakneck speed before freezing once it's in line of sight. Fuck. I know, I know, I'll get you out, I promise. Several more instructions and words of comfort later. Larry is almost out of the labyrinthine sprawl of hallways. Suddenly, a second red dot appears from a nearby vent. Larry, something's vented a few hallways down, but we're almost there. Just keep moving. The dot rushes towards Larry. I need you to walk fast. You're just two turns away. Larry's speed picks up. The second red dot makes contact. Three things happen. I see Larry turn. The coil head rushes towards him. And finally, the walkie-talkie activates. But all I hear is a sickening spring sound. L Larry? You there? Please say something. Hello? Silence. I shut off the terminal. I couldn't do it. I feel sick. Hours pass and I remain on the floor, slumped over with my head resting on the terminal. Head home with the autopilot. I'm leaving. Picking myself up, I hurry to the autopilot and launch the program. The ship takes off, routing back to the company building. A few days later. The company wasn't happy with my early return, but seemed placated when I offered some of my own savings to cover the remaining $40. They gave me a warning and bundled me onto another ship with a new crew and a higher quota. I'm scared of what will happen if I fail again. I look outside the windows of the ship, staring at the passing stars and rest my head against the glass. Is this how it's gonna be? Forever. Ending one. Nothing changes. Let's go back. This time, we grab the remaining cargo. I should... I should grab the items at the entrance. I slowly make my way to the front doors of experimentation site building. Every step up the ladder is an ordeal as I heave my sluggish body up the rungs. I drag my feet across the dirt before pushing the door open with a loud creak. I gather the items left at the entrance, my muscles achy and slow with fatigue. A laser pointer, a crystal, and a jar of pickles. What was that? I look up. It's here, right there. I make eye contact with a dark shape, looming in the corner, watching me. Yay! I fly into a panic, scrambling back against the door as it steps into view. Tall, humanoid, and dark in colour, with glowing white eyes. Several leaf-like structures protrude from its back. Its eyes widen, and it takes a step forward. I need to distract it. My fingers grasp the crystal and toss it at the creature. It falls short, landing at its feet. It stops, staring at the gem as it skids to its feet with a clattering sound. I take the chance to escape through the front door and sprint back to the ship. I don't sleep well that night. Day 2. Do you love the Bracken and its two-hit multi-attacks? Bonus brownie points for whoever gets the reference. I'm awoken by the horrific sound of the aircraft shuddering. It creaks loudly as if the metal plating is barely holding together. The storm! In my state last night, I forgot to set up the protective shields. Shit! The ship rattles as the storm batters the metal exterior. I hear something tearing and landing on the ground with a heavy thud. I have no choice but to wait till the storm subsides. Bunkering down in my cot, I wrap myself in my blanket. The winds tear at the ship's exterior. The entire ship creaks and shakes, pebbles making horrific clanging sounds against the sheet metal. I check my phone to see if I can at least talk to my friends in the hot monster simp chat. No signal. Great. I cover my ears, close my eyes and wait. Whichever claims me first, sleep or the storm, it can find me here. Several hours pass. After checking to make sure the weather is safe, I head outside to assess the damage. Well, shit. The ship is battered. The satellite on top is torn clean off and upside down in the dirt. There's a dark black viscous liquid draining out of the fuel tank. I rush inside to check the terminal, comms and autopilot offline. Flashes on the screen in bold red letters. Damn it! I slap the terminal in frustration. Immediate regret sets in and I cradle my hand. I need to find some way to repair the ship or I don't want to think about that all. Maybe I can find something usable inside the building. I'm not too worried about food, given that there's a water source and some edible flora and fauna on the planet. I'm more worried about what lurks inside the building, but given that Larry and I were the only two on this assignment, and Larry's gone, I have no choice but to face whatever's in there, alone. I spend the first part of the day inside the building, sticking close to the front exit and fire escapes. At least if anything comes to me, I have a chance of bolting. I avoid the labyrinth of hallways, for now. But something feels strange, like something is watching me. I know it can't be Larry, but I don't want to think of it as anything else. I'm just paranoid. It's understandable. After what happened yesterday, there's nothing there. I mutter to myself, hell-bent on deluding myself so I can keep it together. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing. I head back the way I came and stop. There's something on the floor. 
A bolt sits on the ground alongside a laser pointer. Huh? I don't remember seeing these. I must have missed them or dropped them. I'm so tired I just didn't realise, I guess. I pick up the items and head to the front door, depositing them outside before re-entering the building. Looks like I've cleared the front area. It seems like it's time to go further in. The bolts are useful, and the sheet metal too. So, if I can find more, maybe I can make some repairs. I flick on my flashlight, grip my shovel, and step into the labyrinth of hallways. I made sure to open the necessary blast doors beforehand so it was easy to move around. An hour passes dully, and I sigh as I stumble over my sixth key. Can't I just get something useful? That's when I hear it. A shrill creak of rusty hinges as a vent opens. I turn around and bolt towards what I desperately hope is the exit. It's not. It's the exit. Where is it? I turn down corridor after corridor that echo my footsteps far too loud. A chill grips my spine when I realize it's not just my footsteps thundering down the hall. I turn. A horrific twang fills my ears and I stare into the worst thing imaginable. It's here! The pale body, unnaturally stiff arms, and a large coil topped with a banged up mannequin head. This is the dumbest thing I've ever drawn. Fuck, it, it came right to me. The coil head that killed Larry towers over me, its head bobbing menacingly. Got the Jojo references in. As if fate was written to laugh at me, my flashlight flickers before going out. I'm fucked. I'm gonna die on some distant moon, working a shitty job that pays peanuts without ever making a dent in my ever-growing student debt. I'll never get to talk about how mitochondria from Wyvern Orm C is hot with Orion Tube ever again. Help. I can barely get my voice above a whisper. Not that it would matter. There's no one to hear me. No one to help, even if I could be heard. I whimper and take a step back, my hands shaking as it traces a rough brick. Step by step, I move backwards, trying desperately to remember my way back. My fingertips scrape against the wall in desperation, and my eyes focus on the creature in the darkness. But the further I get, the less sure I am I'm squinting at anything. I round the corner. The coil head appears in my line of sight at breakneck speed. The sound makes me jump. I start crying. The sound of its spring bounces off the walls aggressively. I, I can't do this. I'm done. Can't even say goodbye to my family or my friends. I take another step and stumble backwards, falling. I close my eyes. I hear a loud crunch and my eyes fly open. The coil head hasn't made it to me. Something is keeping it at bay. An aggressive growl reverberates off the walls and gradually I make out the outline of a tall black humanoid gripping the coil head. Its claws rake down the creature with a sickening tear. The other monster that I saw yesterday. The one I tossed loot at. I stare at the scene, unmoving and dumbfounded. The creature crushes the coil head's arms in its strong grip. I watch in fascination as the leafy tendrils on its back extend into blades, and they surge around the coil head, stabbing into it. I don't dare to breathe. Maybe it doesn't see me. Then a dull spring sound followed by a thump makes my eyes bulge. The creature ripped the coil's head head off. A hissing sound fills the air as the coil head's body begins to shudder and crackle, emitting flames and a strange gas. Now's my chance. I attempt to scramble to my feet, wincing as a sharp pain shoots up my ankle. Fuck, I must have heard it when I fell. I start dragging myself forward, terrified. I just need to get far away enough so that I... The world flips upside down. My feet no longer touch the ground. Strong arms cradle me. Hey, <laughs> hey. As my surroundings pass by in a blur, whatever has me, we're running from the exploding coil head. When I open my eyes again, I'm back at the entrance. I'm placed gently on the ground, my back resting against the exit door. The leaf dawn creature crouches over me, looking almost concerned. Here it is. Oh. This is great. It's like an anime. Which is, I mean, the original goal. Uh, um. Wait, why are there petals? I'm trembling. I don't know what this creature is. Is it purring? Uh, hi? It shifts closer, and my eyes widen. Smack it with the shovel this time. Fear spikes through me. I grab my discarded shovel and swing hard. It connects to the creature's head with a sickening thud. The metal sound ringing in your ears. The impact knocks it back a little, stunning it. It's no longer purring. I hear a terrifying low rumble start before it raises in pitch into an angry screech. No, the screech becomes painful as I cover my ears and wince. A sharp pain surges up my spine. Then nothing. Ending 2. Why did you hit it? And not in the sexy way. You can tell that I wrote this. <laughs> Alright. Let's stay calm this time. I stay frozen, maintaining eye contact as it gently trills. It's claw coming up to softly grip my chin. Turning my head from one side to another. Oh god, I'm such a sucker for stuff like that. Are you checking if I'm hurt? It pauses and purrs as if to say yes. Um, 
This means yes. I demonstrate by nodding my head and then shaking it. And this one means no. I watch as it makes a soft, inquisitive sound before pointing to me and nodding tentatively. Oh, thank you. It chirps. I try to stand but my ankle still hurts. I yelp as it gathers me into its arms again. Hey, you don't have to- Sunlight hits my face as it opens the door and walks outside. The realization that the monsters could and can go outside does not make me feel any better. I curl up and lean my head against its chest as it steps over to the ledge. It emits a worried trill before cradling me closer, then it jumps off the ledge, landing with a thud. The sound that escapes me is somewhere between a gasp and a gargled scream. Gods, warn me next time! It rumbles apologetically, one of its claws softly rubbing back and forth on my skin. Maybe it shouldn't be soothing, but it is. The creature walks towards the ship, stepping onto the ledge without using the ladder. It sets me down on my sleeping cot before standing back up. Oh! Now that I get a good look at it, it's quite big. I look down. Everywhere. <laughs> oh my god. I flush and I look away from the substantial bulge. The group chat would have a field day, I can almost hear Ori screeching. If only the hot monster sim chat could see this now. The creature cocks its head. Oh, it's nothing, just talking to myself. Its shoulders relax. So, I don't mean to be rude, but what are you? The creature packs up confused. Give me a moment. I step over to the terminal and check the data bank. The bestiary still works. Okay, hold still. The creature stands straighter and doesn't move and I chuckle. You're kinda cute. I bring my scanner up. It stiffens and pulls back, its stance becoming defensive. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I should've warned you. I lower the scanner. It won't hurt you, I promise. It'll just help me know what to call you. The creature relaxes a little. I activate the scanner and it blips. New creature data, sent to terminal. Sigurd's danger level is 70%. Scientific name, Rapidsfolium. A Bracken? So, you're a plant? It nods, a little leaf on its head, bobbing. Exhibits high aggression, even when unprovoked. You don't seem very aggressive. It lets out a soft rumble. I guess you're different than most. Thank you for saving me, by the way. I stretch out my hand and it looks at me, confused. Embarrassed, I withdraw my hand. I shuffle awkwardly for another moment before a yawn escapes me. I'm exhausted. Today was a lot. For the third time today, the bracken scoops me into its arms. Hey! It deposits me back onto my sleeping cot, this time pulling the blanket up over me, including my head. I laugh. I appreciate it, but blankets usually don't go over the head. It wraps its arms around itself. Is that a blush? But really, thank you. I smile with gratitude and watch the colour deepen. Almost definitely a blush. Then it awkwardly shuffles out of the ship, nodding quickly before turning and heading back to the building. I listen to the howling from the eyeless dogs abruptly quieten as the bracken emits an aggressive growl. The blast door shut, and I settle into a deep sleep. We met the bub! Day 3, kiss kiss, fall in love. I wake to the squawking of manticoils outside and sit up, stretching my arms. Wow, I slept well. I quickly brush my teeth, eat a granola bar, and chug some water. I'm gonna need more sheet metal today if I'm gonna repair this ship. I open the blast door, shielding my eyes from the harsh sun. Grabbing my flashlight and shovel, I step out onto the metal platform. As I trudge over to the ladder, I spot the bracken from yesterday sitting on the edge of the upper platform. I wave at it and chuckle as it stares back, confused. I don't suppose it knows human greetings. I quickly ascend the ladder and jog over to the tall black cryptid. I can't help but relish the soft grumbles it emits as a greeting. Are you waiting for me? A soft rumble tells me that the answer is yes. I smile. I head inside the building and to my surprise it follows behind me. The first hour is spent gathering scrap in complete peace. No monsters approach us, and the bracken even points out scrap to me or brings me items on its own. You're like a cute guard dog. I laugh and the bracken emits a soft happy rumble. I take a step forward, but my foot catches on something sticky. I fall straight into a giant spider web. Ah! I try to break free, but get more tangled. The hairs on the back of my neck stand as I hear a gross skittering sound. A giant spider appears from the hallway and barrels towards me. God, this is the joke I am the most proud of. <laughs> I freeze. Fortunately, I told the company that I had arachnophobia before I started. I scream anyway. It doesn't even get close. I hear a sickening rip and squelch as the bracken launches itself forward, bringing its foot down to stomp into the spider's head. Its clawed hand holds one of the spider's severed legs in its grip. The spider screeches before shriveling into itself. The bracken returns quickly, eyes furrowed in concern as it gently cuts me from the web with its sharp talons. This... This is the second time you saved me. 
What would I do without you? I laugh weakly as the bracken gently grips my shoulders, leaning down to my eye level and chirping. Die, I suppose. I'm okay, because of you. Reassure it, platonic. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the romantic route. But we'll do the platonic one later. Like we'll get the platonic ending too. I hear a soft, anxious sound emanating from the bracken's chest. Its body trembles as its claws gently reach for me. Hey! It whines and steps closer, looking down over me. I move close, wrapping my arms around its middle as it stiffens. Hey, it's okay. I'm okay. See? It steadies as one of its arms wrap around my waist, hugging me close to its body. I feel the gentle press of its claws cradle the back of my head as it nuzzles my hair. Nothing happened, because you were here to protect me, remember? I feel it nod and press me impossibly closer. I rub gentle circles against its back with my hand. Thank you for keeping me safe. It stops trembling, emitting a soft purr instead. And after a while, I untangle myself from its arms, giving its hand a soft squeeze. I move to pick up my scattered items and I watch it heap a bunch of scrap into its large arms. I think I'll head back early for today. Could you give me a hand? It nods enthusiastically, and we head to the exit to grab the rest of our scrap. A little later, we drop off the last of the scrap on the ship. The Bracken gently places down several V8 engines it was carrying on its own. Having you around has been a great help. Its soft trill makes me smile, and the creature bends down for me to pat its head gently. It's only 4pm, so we've got some time before things get scary. It points to itself. A low growl emanating loudly enough that I can feel it buzz through the air from its place beside me. Are you saying I'm safe with you around? A soft rumble and a tentative nod. I don't doubt it, but we should be careful nonetheless. Oh, that reminds me. It had nodded. It was communicating. Let me teach you some greetings and stuff. The creature leans back slightly, turning its body towards me inquisitively. Come along, we'll sit somewhere a little nicer. I motion the bracken over as I exit the ship, climbing the nearby ladder to the top of the water tank. I sit at the edge, facing the sun and letting the warm rays bask us in the golden glow. The bracken plops itself down next to me, a pleasant sound rolling from its chest. Okay, so this means maybe. I spend the next hour or so teaching it different greetings and gestures. So waving is how we say hello, but also how we say goodbye. I explain while demonstrating the movement and I laugh as it mimics my actions. You only know what nodding and shaking your head means. Hmm. What else can I teach you? Demonstrate the high five. Oh, high-fiving is a show of friendship and victory. I hold its hand up and gently clap mine against it. See? I hold my hand up again, and this time it reaches forward. But instead of a quick tap, it intertwines our fingers together. Hehe. <laughs> and leans closer. Its body draws closer to mine. That means something different. My face feels hot. It doesn't let go. Um, it leans in closer, bringing its face to my eye level. Gods, it really is cute. It might even be better than the brain flayer from Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could I not chuck in a Baldur's Gate 3 reference? I jump a little as its free arm wraps around me, hand pressing against the small of my back. It presses our foreheads together, and a hum reverberates quietly from its chest. It, here, let me. I bring both my hands to cradle its face gently, before pressing my lips to its mouth. This, this is how you show you like someone, as more than a friend. The bracken emits a high-pitched sound before it surges forward, brushing against my lips again. It pulls me closer, one of its hands gently gripping my shoulder. One of my hands slides down, then over the cord and muscles to stroke its forearm. We stay there for a while, kissing in the warmth of the setting sun. Yay! It's getting dark. The bracken nods before pointing at me, then at the ship. I should, but hanging out with you is fun. I hear a soft rumble as the bracken tugs my sleeve, motioning to the setting sun, then back to the ship. Yeah, I know, I know. I should get back. It gets dicey at night. It sadly nods. I'll see you tomorrow, first thing in the morning. I stand and stretch my limbs before climbing down the ladder and heading back to the ship. I watch the bracken, wondering if it'll follow me, but it instead walks towards the kitchen. It waves and the movement is a little awkward, unsure. Good night. I wave back as it walks inside the building. Back inside the ship, I seal the blast doors and step out of my suit. I eat a couple more granola bars before showering and brushing my teeth, flopping straight into my cot right after. I still don't have signal yet, so I can't inform the hot monster simp chat about my makeout session with the strangely hot monster I'm acquainted with on this distant moon. Thinking about the bracken again, I blush and trace my lips with my fingers. This is wild. That night, I dream of soft kisses, claws gently holding me, and a cute seven foot tall plant monster. Day 4. Am I delusional? Or can I really be happy in this new world? A gentle knocking rouses me from my slumber. As I sit up, I realize it's a faint thunking noise rapping against the ship's blast doors. I drag myself over and open the blast doors. Instead of the sun hitting my face, I'm swallowed by the large shadow of the bracken, bending down to fit into the frame of the door and one clawed hand grasping the top edge of it. Hot. Hi! 
Why? Couldn't wait for me to show up, huh? The bracken nods, the movement a little more sure and practiced than yesterday. It ducks slightly and steps into the ship. It makes an inquisitive sound. I'm not sure what to do today. I guess we could take the day off work and just hang out here. An affirmative purr makes me laugh. It's been a while since I've taken a day off. Come to think of it, I haven't explored this planet much. Want to go check it out? An affirmative chirp greets my ears. We set up to explore the building's surroundings. I point out the manticoils, watching them skate around oddly with their wings spread out. The bracken chases off a baboon hawk as it gets too close, and I laugh as the offending creature bounds away squawking. We even come across several random giant pumpkins just sitting there. Oh, so it's exactly like pumpkins on earth, just huge. I cut a wedge of the pumpkin and stash it in my bag. I can roast pumpkin for dinner tonight. Wait, do you eat? I watch the bracken cock its head to the side and shrug. I mean, if you're a plant, you photosynthesize, right? It shrugs again. Well, I still need to eat, so I'm cooking this tonight. It makes a soft chortling sound, its shoulders shaking again. Are you laughing at me? It nods, and I can't help but laugh too. I'll have you know, eating food, although annoying, is a great time. You can make so many wonderful dishes. It rolls its eyes as if it's telling me that I'm the one with the skill issue. You're getting cheeky, aren't you? It, I yelp as it pokes me on the side. After a couple of hours of exploring, including checking out a random house that looks like it's spawned out of thin air, we head back to the ship. Alright, let's get the party started. We head inside the ship and I busy myself with seasoning and roasting the pumpkin. The bracken stands there awkwardly before coming over to see what I'm doing. You can make yourself at home, you know. Have a look around. It wraps its arms around my waist instead, holding me close. I blush. The scene is oddly domestic and I'm surprised at how much I like it. I wonder if we could stay like this forever. I press myself back into its chest as it bends over to rest its chin on my head. We then sit at the little table and chat while I eat. It pokes fun at me now and then. Yeah, yeah, you can just stand in the sun for sustenance. It makes a little chortling sound again. You're lucky you're cute. I don't let anyone tease me like this. I swear it's beaming with happiness. I finish up eating and wash the dishes. My thoughts constantly drawn back to the hot monster inside my ship. How are the relationship between us work anyway? I mutter quietly to myself as I dry the dishes and put them away. My eyes flick to the terminal in the corner of the ship. Wiping my hands on a small towel, I shuffle over to the machine. Sigo danger level 70%. Scientific name, Graphics Folium. Tapping on the keys, I bring up the Bracken's file on the bestiary again and scroll through. So, does it bug? The Bracken is a highly intelligent plant life form. No scientists have observed more than one Bracken living in the same space at any one time. It is unknown how it reproduces. Why am I even looking this up? I feel like I'm being intrusive. A soft twinkling sound comes from over my shoulder. And I turn only to be face to face with the very monster I'm thinking of horizontally tangoing with. Ah! I fly back and bump my head on the terminal and pain bursts across my skull. Ow! I feel clawed hands cradle my face and my eyes stare into concerned white ones. I'm okay, you just startled me is all. It whimpers. What? Does it whimper while it f focus? Wait, don't be sad, I'm not mad. I was just lost in thought. The bracken looks up at me, wringing its clawed hands together nervously. I step forward and take its hands in mine. Seriously, don't worry, you didn't do anything wrong, okay? A startled squeak escapes me when it leans down, engulfing me into a hug. It rubs its cheek against mine, kissing me on the forehead. You're a lot more affectionate now. It's not a bad thing, I just... It's my turn to blush as it gently runs its mouth along my hand, kissing each finger. My breath catches. You learn fast. It chirps before backing away, moving to stand at its full height, looking curiously around the room. It makes the space inside the ship look smaller. It walks over to the terminal, pressing a button curiously. I watch it move over to the hanging LED lights against the wall, poking one with its clawed fingers. Those are some lights I got to make the place look a little cozier. They're not much, but they make it feel more like home. The bracken nods, and its eyes widen curiously as it spies the blue boombox resting on the floor. Oh, this is the boombox. I move to press the button, and music fills the ship. It plays fun tunes like this, and you can dance to it. The bracken tilts its head. Do you know how to dance? It shakes its head. Yeah, like this. I start to bend my knees doing little quarter squats before pushing my palms out and retracting them one by one in time to the music. I'm not very good at dancing, but as long as you're having fun, I'd say that's what matters. I change my hand movements into fists, moving them up and down. The bracken clumsily copies my movements, moving its arms stiffly. There you go! I move forward and take the bracken's hands, resuming the dance with our fingers entwined. I laugh as we dance together, the bracken getting more used to the movement as, m as the time passes. I teach it to twirl, and we even attempt the world's worst waltz even mockingly bowing at one another at the end. We dance late into the night, eventually squeezing into the tiny cot together and falling asleep. Good night. I really enjoyed today. It cuddles closer. The clawed hand strokes down my back, gently dipping under the hem of my pajamas to trace the bare skin. 
for the first time since arriving here. I don't need the heater. Day 5. Why do I feel like I'm in an anime? We walk over to the building, my hand shielding my eyes from the harsh morning sun. It's so fucking hot. I run to the shade, ducking into it. The relief it provides isn't nearly as much as I'd hoped. The bracken, on the other hand, doesn't seem to mind the heat at all. The bracken stands in the sun happily, basking in the rays. It motions me over, and I push off the wall, reluctantly joining it under the oppressive heat once more. I reach up and hug the bracken before pulling back and placing both my hands on its face. Balancing on my tiptoes, I guide the creature down for a kiss. It seems all too happy to oblige me. As I run my hands along the sides of its face, I notice a few tiny white blossoms on the tops of its shoulders. Come to think of it before, its whole body looks a little more greenish than before. You've been in the sun more lately, haven't you? The bracken nods and the small leaf tendrils on its head bob up and down. It's adorable. I stifle a laugh and gently poke one of the little blossoms growing on its shoulder. It suits you. A happy rumbling reverberates from it, and we head out to collect scrap for the day. We spend a few hours collecting sheet metal, bolts, and scrap. We even find a few cans of unopened soda. As time goes by, however, I find my mood sinking lower and lower. Why am I even doing this anymore? There's not much else waiting for me back there, save for a shitty job with shitty pay and a whole fuck ton of shitty debt. Do I even want to leave anymore? Is there much point in collecting stuff to try and fix a satellite so I can send a signal to the company? I look up, prompted by a soft whine. The bracken is watching me, concerned. I'm okay, just thinking. It tugs my sleeve and and cocks its head, gently patting my head before picking up all the scrap and carrying it to the exit. I follow along, curious. We arrive at the ship and it dumps the scrap in a little pile. The bracken there turns to me and holds up one finger. One? It nods and points to us both and the ship. Hang out in the ship? An affirmative chirp, but then it holds up two fingers. Two. Another nod, and this time. It points once again to us both before pointing back at the building, then back at itself. Hang out in your room. It nods, pleased with its communicating abilities. Let's save here because we're going to come back to the platonic one after. Go to the Bracken's room. I guess we could go to yours. I don't think I've ever seen it before. I grab some items from the ship before we head back inside the building. We walk through the hallways without much trouble and I eventually enter a large room with beige walls. So this is where you sleep. The Bracken nods. I look around. There's a pile of blankets in the corner and are those my lights? I see the fairy lights from my ship. They're not plugged in but laying on the floor, carefully arranged. I watch the bracken ring its hands together before it reaches a hand forward, gently stroking my face then bringing my hand to their heart. Did you do this to make me feel at home here? Look at the flashback! Those are some lights I got to make the place look a little cozier. They're not much, but they make it feel more at home. It nods. So wonderful, you know that? It chirps happily. I sit on the pile of blankets, beckoning it over to join me. I have an idea! The bracken cocks its head as I move to lie on the blankets, reaching into my bag for the two books I brought along. Okay, so safe for work romance is the one that's just like, you know, romantic without doing the it. The not safe for work romance is when you full do the it. So I think we're gonna read probably the safe for work first, and then we'll go not safe for work, and then we'll do platonic. Let's read something. I hold up a book title. Is it wrong to have a meat cute in the dungeon? My friends back home told me it was a good read and they gifted it to me before I came here. Something about it suiting me or whatever. The bracken sits next to me, curiously eyeing the comic in my hand. I open the pages as we read together. The first chapter shows a novice adventurer entering a dungeon on their own. They're clearly not well equipped enough for the upcoming adventure. As they make their way through, they encounter a monster that looks much too strong. <laughs> this is like when you and I first met. The bracken rumbles in affirmation. I turn the page and watch as the MC attempts to fight the monster before giving up and flirting. Okay, this is so silly. The clawed finger turns the page. You seem to like this. The bracken shrugs and looks at the images in the book. It shows the monster blushing and flirting back while the other more seasoned adventurers look on in shock. Ah, so that's why you like it. We spend the next few minutes reading the book, finishing a couple more chapters before discarding it to the side, wanting to do something else. I reach over shyly, entwining our fingers together, and rub my thumb in little circles on their skin. It looks down at our hands inquisitively before shuffling closer and placing both our hands on its lap. Its skin is cool to the touch, the texture similar to the soft waxy circles of leaves. You know, the last few days have been really great. The bracken turns to face me. I was just so tired all the time. I thought getting more education would help me find a better job, but it didn't and I resented working here. But not anymore, because I met you. It wraps an arm around my shoulder, pulling me to rest my head on its chest. We lie back on the blankets. Can I stay here? The bracken huffs as if telling me, why do you even need to ask? Obviously we need to fix the ship and get the signal back. I can't go radio silent on my family and friends. I feel it nod. But I'm pretty sure the company doesn't care about me anymore since there's no way the ship can fly again. The bracken grabs me with its strong arms, pulling me up until I'm lying on top of it, wrapping me in a tight hug. Do you want me to stay? Again, the same huff, obviously, it implies. 
I mean, if you're happy here, I didn't see why not. I laugh as I feel it purring excitedly, trying to hide its joy and excitement. I move up to kiss the bracken, pecking it on the mouth. It responds by hugging me tighter, rolling onto its side and cuddling me even closer. You're rather clingy, you know? I didn't say it was a bad thing. I like being close to you. The only concern I have though is where we're gonna live. I don't want to take you from your home here and ask you to live in the ship, but I also can't move here or I'll probably die. The bracken sits up, squeezing my shoulder reassuringly, for a point to the door of the room to imply the monsters in the building, then back at itself dragging a single talon across its neck. It looks proud. <laughs> now where did you learn that? It shrugs and I laugh. I can't ask you to clear out the entire compound. It's dangerous and a lot of work. The Bracken shrugs again before flopping back down to the blankets looking at me. I'm sure we'll make something work. Since the ship doesn't fly anymore, maybe we can renovate it. Make it bigger? It rumbles in agreement. I shuffle closer, cuddling up again and resting my cheek against it. I reach a hand up to gently squeeze at the Bracken's chest. Damn, what size bra do you wear? <laughs> if you've watched enough of my videos, me constantly asking this question? Why did I do that? Ignore me. The bracken murmurs and wraps an arm around me. I curl into it. Let's go exploring again tomorrow, okay? It chirps softly before kissing my forehead. I sigh happily and close my eyes, drifting to sleep. I feel warm, safe, and happy. Everything is just perfect. Ending 4. Quota filled. Yay! Two months later. So yeah, we've been really happy ever since. I'm sitting in a group call with the hot monster simp chat. After some time, we managed to restore the signal. So, can you show us the hottie you're in love with? Only if it's okay with it. I motion for the bracken to come over. It stands in front of the camera, waving awkwardly. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty cute. The bracken kneels down to kiss me on the cheek. The group chat explodes in awes and a single gross. But seriously, we thought you were dead. Everyone on earth, including your work, thinks you perished. I mean, chew, but even we thought she was dead. We even built her a shrine in Finite Daydream 14. Nothing like legally dying to get all your dead erased. All according to Keikaku. I whisper to the bracken. Keikaku means plan. I flash a peace sign as the chat groans. So you're just staying there. Yeah, I'm much happier here with my love anyway. Plus, the company designated this planet as barren, so I doubt, they I doubt they'd even come looking for me. Man, I don't want to get stranded on a deserted planet and meet a hot monster too. <laughs> Maybe one day. Until then, you've got Narcus from Baldur's Gate 3. Anyway, I gotta go. It's date night. We say our goodbyes and I hang up the call. I sit next to the Bracken, who already has the terminal set up to crispy roll. I didn't expect you to be so excited when I told you that is it wrong to have a meat cute in the dungeon got animated. I laugh and lean over to kiss the bracket softly before pressing play. He's so cute. Hey, I love you. The bracken chirps and taps its claw three times against my heart telling me the same. We kiss again, then lean back against the pillows. Fingers and claws intertwine as the next episode begins. The end. I was working a shitty job so I quit and fell in love with a monster and now our love is the strongest in the world. Another isekai reference. Alright. Alright, let's go and do the not safe work and then the platonic. Alright, let's read something. I hold up a book titled The Demon King Wants to Marry Me. My friends back home told me it was a good read, so they gifted it to me before I came. Something about it being so like me or whatever. Bracken sits next to me, curiously eyeing the comic in my hand. I open the pages and we read together. The first chapter shows the main character being spirited away to another world, only to be in the presence of the great demon king. This is so cliche. I'm almost offended my friends thought of me when they saw this. I feel a clawed hand trace my lower back and I shiver a little. The next chapter shows the characters getting married. The human, much smaller than the large demon king. Okay, I guess their dynamic is interesting. Bracken kisses me on the cheek and I smile. I turn a couple more pages. The wedding banquet scene is pretty funny. They even managed to fit in a jealous marriage objection too. I feel the Bracken watching as I turn the next couple of pages. My eyes widen and I gasp. Oh boy. I watch as it cocks its head, attempting to peer at the book. Nope, nothing to see. It was it was just really bad. <laughs> a nervous laugh slips out and the bracken squints its eyes, not believing me. It reaches for the book, its large hand, pinning me down. Hey, I whisper as my face burns like it's on fire. The bracken takes my moment of stunned silence and grabs the book, flicking through the pages. I cover my face with my hands. The book is filled with depictions of the demon king absolutely railing his new spouse in various positions. The bracken stares at the pages intensely, taking in the sights of the human's pleasured gasping face and the images of the demon king thrusting his rather large appendage inside them. S see, it's kind of trash. I don't get to finish my sentence as the bracken tosses the book to some corner crawling over me. Hey yo. So you like the book? I laugh nervously as it puffs, moving down to kiss me softly. My arms encircle its torso, eagerly kissing back. Our mouths move against each other and I gently run my fingernails down its chest, squeezing my hand. Damn, what size bra do you wear? <laughs> Why did I say that? I ignore me. It shrugs and resumes kissing me harder this time. 
I trace my hand up the Bracken's body before pushing against it gently. Wait, let me. It sits up, a little confused, and I push it back further. I swing my leg over its thighs and situate myself in its lap, pressing my chest against it. Eh? <laughs> hmm. I run my lips along its neck, kissing gently and trailing my lips down its collarbone. The Bracken hums, a new deeper sound I haven't heard before as it brings its arms up and around me, pulling me closer. I respond by shifting my hips back and forth slowly. It makes a choking sound, and I smirk. I let out a soft gasp as the creature's hands engulf my waist. Its claws lightly dig into my sides as it hoists me upwards. My legs wrap around its waist, arms hanging over its broad shoulders as it nuzzles into the crook of my neck, a full-body shudder reverberating through its bulky frame. It presses its mouth against my lips and I tilt my head, deepening the kiss. How would this work? I don't see anything. I stare inquisitively at the smooth bulge between its legs and place my hand on it. Where is it? Where is it? Does it even have? As I lose myself in thought, the bracken seems to read my mind. I feel a shudder run up its body as its crush begins to unfurl like a blooming plant, allowing two thick ridged rods to protrude from between. You know how you know how much thought I had to put into this to make sure it like, I don't know, fit to the law? <laughs> a clear substance is trickling slowly from the end. Underneath the rods, there's also an opening. Th there's two. Oh, the bracken chirps inquisitively and my face burns. But nothing, I just didn't expect a uh, two. His shoulders deflate a little. That's not a bad thing. It's good. Um, really, really good. Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh holy shit. Oh divines. Oh my god, it's absolutely schlangin'. Hot monster sim chat would scream if they saw this. I crawl over to the bracken and gently push it back to lay against the pillows. It blinks, confused. Here, let me just... I stick my tongue out, lapping up a clear bead of liquid before it can trickle down. A shudder runs through its body, one of its hands coming up to rest over its eyes as it bucks upwards. It's sweet. The clearish liquid is incredibly sweet, tasting almost like nectar. The bracken rumbles from its chest. You're full of surprises, aren't you? I resume my ministrations and it lets out a strangled sound. I'm rewarded with a rough buck of its hips and its clawed hand tangling in my hair, yanking pleasantly. The other hand braces against the wall behind it and it lets out a filthy sounding whine. I can do this. Its growls are becoming more frequent, paired with several whimpers. As its hips buck up against me, the hand braced against the wall comes down to stroke my face lovingly. I hollow out my cheeks. It growls, its claws releasing me to fist desperately at the blankets. Here's the pan. After a couple more moments, it lets out a low whining keen. Sipping a few times and breathing heavily, I raise my head and it strokes my hair affectionately. I crawl onto its lap, kissing down its cheekbones and my arms wrap around its upper body. Its hands run down my body, claws lightly scratching down my sides before gripping my hips and lifting me. I gasp softly. Ta-da! I'm proficient in dual wielding. I can take it. I mutter and begin to push myself downwards. Bracken's glowing white eyes widens as it grabs onto my hips, stealing my movements. As if it's telling me to wait. Look, it's fine. I'm built different. I keep pushing down, the stretch becoming almost painful. Just keep pushing. With one final motion, I sheathe both inside. The stretch is overwhelming and intense. My stomach kind of hurts. Black spots begin to dance in my vision as I sway forward. Well, I black out and everything fades away. GG. <laughs> oh no, ending five. I can take it? Alright, let's go back to just the one. Maybe it's best to go with one for the first time. It's so big, it could spirit roast me on its own with a single one. I gasp as it pushes inside, my hands instinctively flying up to grip its shoulders. It tilts its head to the side, hands tightening its grip on my waist before rolling upwards experimentally. Oh, the bracken's eyes widen as it shallowly rolls again, causing more breathy sounds to escape my lips. As if feeling a surge of confidence, it sets a rhythmic pace. Its grip tightens ever so slightly, and the tips of its claws dig into me pleasurably. It nuzzles its head into the crook of my neck, purring intensely, and I cry out as it hits a spot inside me that renders me whimpering pathetically. As it continues against me, my eyes shoot open when I feel the sensation of something cool and smooth slithering up around my thighs and arms. Hehe. <laughs> what is that? I look down, surprised, as I spy dark green vines curling around my upper thighs to keep me in place. The other tendrils wrap around my arms, pulling them up and restricting them above my head. I let out a choked noise as it practically folds me in half, roughly driving against me, its hands pressing me apart into the blankets. I whine and my hands ring desperately, pulling against the vines. My actions are rewarded with a low rumbling growl and its claws gently digging into my skin. I let out a low whimper as it angles itself, driving into a spot that has me seeing stars. Fuck. It's all too happy to oblige as I feel the vines tightening their grip as a new tendril coils around my neck. Uh, um, 
dragon lets out an inquisitive trill in response and motions to the vine around my throat, gently. Okay? It nods and I feel the vine tighten, just barely restricting my breath. And I lose myself. The bracken resumes its pace, fingers intertwined with mine. I feel the vines restricting me, the smooth tendrils leaving me at the mercy of this creature. My back arches, eyes teary as I whine. It meets my gaze, staring intently into my eyes as it braces itself above me. The bracken releases my wrists and I wrap my arms around its broad shoulders, groaning into the crook of its neck. Its body tenses. Gods! I barely have time to speak as I hear it growl into my ear before it slams back towards me, driving me back into the blankets. My body, oversensitive from the previous activities, feels even hotter, hands scrabbling to find purchase on its thick forearms. The dragon's growls get louder, its body shuddering as it ruins me to chase its climax. Ha <laughs> ho, Jesus. I softly keen, eyes teary, breathing heavily as it nuzzles its face into the crook of my neck before it bites down. <laughs> I strangle out a sound, half between a grin of pain and pleasure as I feel sharp tears sinking into the juncture between my neck and shoulder possessively. Its hips stutter and I feel it releasing before it collapses on top of me. It softly rumbles as it begins to nuzzle at the bite apologetically. You're okay. I gently pat its head, fingers brushing over the little leaves on top of its head. It rolls us over, pulls me close, tugging the blanket over my tired body. I lay there, head resting on the brackens as I look up into its eyes. Its eyes are littered into little half-moon shapes as it stares adoringly at me. A soft purr sounds from its chest. You're like a cat. I laugh and snuggle closer, feeling its other arm wrap around me protectively. As I drift off to sleep, cocooned in the warmth of soft blankets and my strange cryptid lover, I sigh. I think I'm going to hand in my resignation. Ending 6. Quota filled. If you know, you know. <laughs> Two months later. So yeah, we've been really happy ever since. I'm sitting in a group call with the hot monster simp chat. After some time, we managed to restore the signal. So can you show us the hottie you're in love with? Only if it's okay with it. I motion for the bracken to come over. It stands in front of the camera, waving awkwardly. Oh wow. Yeah, it's pretty cute. The bracken kneels to kiss me on the cheek. And the group chat explodes in awe. In awe? And a single gross. But seriously, we thought you were dead. Everyone on earth, including your work, thinks you perished. I mean, Chub, even we thought she was dead. We even built her a shrine in Finite Daydream 14. Nothing like legally dying to get all your debt erased. All according to Keikaku. I whisper to the bracken. Keikaku means plan. I flash a peace sign as the chat groans. So you're just staying there. Yeah, I'm much happier here with my love anyway. Plus, the company designated this planet as barren, so I doubt they even come looking for me. Man, I want to get stranded on a deserted planet and meet a hot monster too. Maybe one day. Until then, you've got Narcus from Ball's Gate 3. Anyway, gotta go. It's date night. We say our goodbyes and I hang up the call. And I sit next to the bracket on the bed. I giggle as it pushes me down gently before climbing on top of me, kissing my neck. Needy. I wasn't even gone for long. So cute. That's why I love you though. The bracken chirps, taps its claw three times against my heart, telling me the same. Its claws run up my legs, enveloping my waist before it tugs at my shirt. I smirk. Think you can do that thing you did again last night? Its eyes widen before it pins my wrist to the bed. I laugh, shut my eyes, and enjoy the ride. That the end. That time I got transported away to be a monster's love on a distant planet. Yay, we did the romance ones. Let's go back and do the let's go back and do the platonic one. Go hang out in the ship. So basically throughout the game, if you pick the platonic options, you actually get different scenes as well. Instead of the romance dance date, you'll get something else entirely. Why don't we chill on the ship? I found Larry's contender swap console that we can play Mega Mash siblings on. I'll teach you how to play. We head inside the ship and I hook up Larry's console to the terminal. I hand the Bracken one of the controllers. So we're basically versing one another. I win the first match in record time while the Bracken simply holds the controller and waits. It's so cute! This is my favourite drawing I did. Okay, so this button is a punch, this lets you move, and if you string different hits together, you get what's called a combo. It grips the controller and points at the contendo swap. Again? It nods impatiently. Alright, I'm gonna kick your butt! After a couple of matches, we sit in comfortable silence before I speak. You're getting the hang of it! It chirps proudly, having gotten a win in the last round. I stare at the controller in my hands, thinking back to my earlier dilemma. Hey, you cool if I move here? Anxious, my words start to slide together. I'm talking too fast, but I can't seem to stop. It's just I don't really have much going for me back home, and I'm pretty happy here, and... The bracken nods. Seriously? You mean it? It nods more aggressively this time. Yes, we'll have to fix the satellite so I can tell my family, but I'll quit my job and we can just forage for food and hang out every day. I've always wanted to say fuck you to capitalism and move somewhere secluded. I flash the bracken a double thumbs up, and after a moment of trying to organize its long fingers, it mirrors the gesture back at me. Anyway, let's go again. I hold up the controller. Time to run the set. The bracken holds its controller and presses start. Ending 3. Friends forever.
A few months later. So yeah, we've been having a ton of fun since. I'm sitting in a group call with the hot monster simp chat. After some time, we managed to restore the signal. So, can you show us the hottie you met? Only if it's okay with it. I motion for the bracken to come over. It stands in front of the camera, waving awkwardly. I peg it. <laughs> Don't listen to them. It shrugs and walks back to the boombox, turning on some music. But seriously, we thought you were dead. Everyone on earth, including your work, thinks you perished. I mean, Chief, even we thought she was dead. We even built her a shrine in Finite Daydream 14. Nothing like legally dying to get all your debt erased. All according to Keikaku. Translator's note, Keikaku means plan. I flash a peace sign as the chat groans. So you're just staying there? Yeah, I'm much happier here anyway. Plus the company designated the planet as barren, so doubt they'd even come looking for me. Man, I want to get stranded on a deserted planet and meet a hot monster too. Maybe one day. Until then, you've got Narcus from Falls Gate 3. Anyway, gotta go. Gotta hang out with the buddy. We say our goodbyes and I hang up the call and sit next to the Bracken, who already has the Nintendo swap set up. I thought you'd gotten tired of getting your ass kicked. The Bracken rolls its eyes and we press play. The end. My friends are my power. I had to sneak in the Kingdom Hearts reference. Those are all the endings. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Thank you so much for listening to the story as I read through it. This was so much fun to make with my friends. It started with an idea like 12 days ago from the day I recorded this. And I was like, we should make a Bracken dating sim. And then we just like powered through. I wrote the script in two days, did all the sprite and art. Uh, my friend Teeth did the backgrounds and then her and Buku coded. My friend B did the GUI and then we had Kath and Ray on editing. So we just pulled this together so quickly. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this silly little shoujo anime Bracken dating game. If you guys want to play the game for yourself, it is linked in the description box below. You can download it completely free and feel free to stream and create content with it as well. Uh, if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thank you so much again for watching. I really hope you enjoy the game and until next time, take care.